Lee, thanks for and I've known this wanting to hear. For, I don't know, five years? It's more than that. I think you came into my life in 2017. Was it 17? I think it was 17. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, this is Jasper, and she's got a story to tell us. Tell us the story. Yeah. Um, so it started back in 2015, 2016, 16. Um, I was having a normal uh, filling that was being taken care of by my local dentist here. And when he went to do the numbing injection, um, I experienced what can only be described as a lightning bolt of electricity in my body. Uh, I felt like I was flapping like a fish out of water, um, extreme pain. My left half of my face went completely numb, um, drooping like I had had a stroke. I mean, just, I lost all control. Um, he hit the nerve and unfortunately he said it was the third time in 30 years of his career that that had happened, but not to worry, it should not be permanent. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the symptoms did not go away. I started experiencing some discoloration on the left side of my face. I started experiencing new pain in some of my teeth that was not previously present. Um, I started noticing <clears throat> odd sweating patterns on my face that I was not used to. And so I started going to different doctors trying to figure out what was wrong and whether it was my uh, internist, whether it was my dentist, I saw a neurologist, I saw an ortho, um, oral surgeon. They could all speak to a portion of my symptoms, but they could never say, this explains the whole story. This, this is what's wrong. Um, and then I started having really intense pain in a tooth on my lower right side. And I thought, oh, here we go again. I was nervous. I didn't want to have any more dental work done. A um, little bit of PTSD from it. So I was then sent to a local doctor to look at a potential root canal. And he was doing all of the normal testing. And I would react to some of the markers, but not all of them. So he kept saying, I don't want to do the root canal. We're not quite there yet. Um, I was going in on a monthly basis to be evaluated. And the pain was keeping me from sleeping, from eating, from being able to function at work. So after seven months of seeing him on a monthly basis, he finally said, let's just do it. Maybe it'll fix it. It might just be worth it. So we did the root canal. The next day I woke up and the pain was in the tooth behind it. And I thought, oh dear Lord, did we just do the wrong tooth? And I um, started to panic and thinking, I can't go through this again. My mental state was declining. Um, I was starting to fall into depression. It just was all consuming. And then I started going to different doctors who were then just medicating me. And I was on full doses of gabapentin. I was on full doses, like 3,600 uh, milligrams a day. Um, and then all the wonderful side effects that come with all of the uh, medications. And I just feared that that was going to be my life. And um, since my parents are local, my mom needed to go to the dentist. She immediately thought, well, I'm not going to who she went to. And they live around the corner. And they had seen Dr. Nick signed. So my mom said, I'm going to go see Dr. Nick and see what's happening here. Uh, Nick, she started, I guess, kind of saying to you a little bit about my story and she didn't, come about she, didn't. she came for her own crown yeah. Yeah. and um she mentioned? she mentioned me and you you were the very first person in almost a year and a half that was actually asking proactive questions he said hmm is she noticing any color changes on her face and i was like yeah he's like huh um, does she ever say her teeth feel really cold or, um, my mom was like, yeah, she said, it feels like they're in an ice bath. He's like, huh? So after a few of these questions, he told mom, I think you said, I'm 95% sure I know what's wrong with her. Would she be willing to come in? Let me take a look at her. So I came in the next day and you ran a bunch of tests. Um, we did some of those horrible ice water testing and for sensitivity and things. And then Dr. Nick looked at me and he said, I'm 98% sure that I know what's going on with you, but I'm not the right person to give you a formal diagnosis. I think you have CRPS and you should go see Mark Piper. Um, 
it was the biggest relief I think I had first exhale I had maybe had in a year and a half that I wasn't crazy, that there was something that could explain all of the symptoms. Um, so his office was fantastic, got us in touch with Dr. Piper. Um, that was probably four months, three or four months before I made it down to see Dr. Piper just to get on his schedule. Um, my mother and I flew down there and in the first 15 minutes of my exam with Dr. Piper, he's like, oh yeah, you have Crips. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I do. Um, so now what? Um, and I remember watching some of his instructional educational videos in the office. And actually I started crying in one of the sessions because I just realized this is what's going on with me. This is my issue. Um, and he had a plan. Um, so we've also discovered that I had TMJ and I had had that for a lot of my life, but it was near surgical, but it wasn't fully surgical. So we we're like, let's just watch this. Let's get your bite right. So I came back and saw Dr. Nick and do you remember how many we did? Eight crowns in one day. Um, sure. Yeah. Well, to be clear, so we had our back, we did multiple MRI scans. We did them very in positions. We did yes. an MRI ever so slightly forward, another millimeter forward, another millimeter, and then IEP, and then fully translated. And Piper had me pick the position that was least forward that had the discs fully recaptured. Okay? So mandibular um, repositioning. Basically, we're, we're kind of going a little bit down in forwards. <clears throat> And we're trying to make sure that we have the disc there. So what's the point of the disc? Well, in Piper's world, when he does the surgery, he says fat grafts. And the fat grafts basically uh, myelination. He goes, you know, you've got unmyelinated sympathetic member, greater amine, when we're talking about sympathetic nervous system and all that. So you put fat up in there, and you kind of remyelinate and insulate the nerves. So anyhow, so we did, so we, we picked, we took those MRI scans, and. We looked at the one that was, and we used that exact bite, and then I scanned that into Sarah for my buckle bite, which is how you kind of correlate that all together. And then we basically built her um, crown lace, like onlay types. You know, <laughs> if, she, if you look at her, if she'll let you look in the back. I mean, the margins are like super, gen I mean, way super gingival. Like I have to hide a contour above most of the time. Mm -hmm. And we're building her bite up, and we're making sure that she has an immediate, complete answer. Uh, a measuring answer guide to both, right? So yeah, which worked. Um, we started to see some relief from the pain. We were able to change out some of my medications and start to function a little bit better. Um, different life events started to impact though my pain level. So with Crips patients, your sleep, your stress levels, um, things like that would just cause more flares with me than I was. Uh, prepared to deal with. Um, and so I would come back and I would see Dr. Nick. Uh, he was always really great to get me in to do nerve blocks in my neck. Um, and then we started introducing, what laser is it? Uh, the Indian laser. Yeah, um, which was great to start to reduce some of the internal and the external heat on the left side of my face, which was a huge relief. The neck blocks only lasted for what, an hour? When we started, yeah, they were only lasting a couple of hours. And then what we did, then we added the laser, which gave you what, about five, six, eight days, right? Our first big win was about eight days. Yep. And then we got up to a month, about 28 days of relief, which was completely unheard of uh, for me. And, and I had done stellate ganglion nerve blocks in the past and had about a 50% success rate with those. So actually getting a month with Dr. Nick was completely new to me and I was just blessed. Um, and so we started kind of just operating. That was the new norm. Just come in for the nerve block when you need it, come in for the laser when you need it. Um, and then last year, the day after I turned 40, uh, I yawned and my jaw popped and did not go back to where it was supposed to. So that kind of straw that Dr. Piper had warned me about finally broke the camel's back. And Dr. Nick, we did an MRI here. We looked at it. We weren't completely sure if it was surgical or not. We felt like it, we hoped it wasn't going to be, but I think in our gut, we both knew that it 
was. Um, and so last August, I went down and saw Dr. Piper, or I saw Dr. Shaw, um, since Dr. Piper had already retired at that point. And the MRIs confirmed it, the tests confirmed it, that I needed bilateral disc discectomy and fat graft. Um, so we did that surgery on January 11th of this year. Um, tremendous success. Uh, if you heard earlier, my pain level has only been at a one or a one and a half at maximum. Um, I have gotten off of all of my pain medications. Um, and I'm kind of back to actually getting my life back. Um, it's kind of sad I don't see Dr. Nick as often as I used to. Um, but I know that if I ever need to, I'll, I'll be back here for touch-ups as needed. But yeah. Dr. Shaw is completely thrilled with my success, and I'll be back in August for my six-month checkup. Yeah, how cool is it? Well, actually, it's not cool. <laughs> you just go to the dentist, and they give you an injection. And... If you didn't, if you've never found somebody who knew what was going on, which you couldn't, mm -mm. right? Mm -mm. We went everywhere. And I'm not trying to be arrogant or. Oh. What I'm saying is. I never know, expected in Northwest Arkansas to find the person who would diagnose me. There's like no one in this community. There's a chiropractor down in Fayetteville that knows something about it. Katinka. Did you just feel I, I did not because the Sparrow Clinic was yeah. a minimum of twenty five thousand yeah. dollars, without even a guarantee that you would be accepted into the program. Yeah. And they're chiropractors, and they they they, they kind of like like we do like see people from everywhere. They treat CRPS. They're kind of stimulating the vagus basically, which is what parasympathetic. Okay. And on a lot of the chat boards for the Crips community, people are flying globally to see Katinka, and they're having tremendous success. So, and so um, yeah, it's usually somewhat. It's kind of like our thing. How pulls the beaker? Like with us, it's not always the bites a hundred percent. You know, it's like yeah. 10 percent, twenty, fifty, eighty, whatever. But yeah, Katinka. So that was her own, and you would have probably, I don't know if you would have ever found I don't know. Um, I read her book. Um, you had given after, me her information. But after you found out, after here's you, the point. You gave me her book. So she thought she was going depressed, going, getting on meds, all this mm -hmm. kind of craziness. So the physicians and the dentists were making her crazy. And, but she's the crazy TMJ patient. I saw... It was my sixth pain management doctor before I was accepted into a pain management program because they all thought I was just drug seeking. So Piper, after I sent her to Piper, he's like, I want you to get still a ganglion box back home. Mm -hmm. Still a ganglion is that inferior circle ganglion. Remember there's three nodes, one, two, three. The still it's like the, the, the mothership, which will talk for vitals and all that. Whereas the superior cervical is the one that's mostly face up or higher, right up here. The C2, C3 region, all that. So still a ganglion, you know, you have to go like, Right by the thyroid, way the mm -hmm. back. And it's done by x-ray or ultrasound. He did by right. x-ray with me. Now you might want to tell him that story. So, so finally she gets to someone that would even accept doing that for her because they thought, Chris doesn't happen in the head and neck. Mm -hmm. And these are pain management specialists and neurologists. They all said that cowboy down in Florida doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. And I brought all of my paperwork. Yeah. And they wouldn't even consider me. Yeah. So, what so the first uh, block we did, uh, it worked, but it only lasted for about two weeks. Again, at the time, two weeks was amazing. What were they charge for? Oh, um, a couple grand. It was yeah, it was a couple thousand dollars to do it. Uh, insurance started to meet that deductible, so that helped. Um, then the second one I did didn't take, no results. Uh, the third one lasted about three weeks. So now we're thinking, okay, it's maybe worth keep trying. The fourth one, um, unfortunately, all those uh, potential side effect risks that they make you sign off on, all of those happened with me. It paralyzed my diaphragm. It paralyzed my esophagus. Um, I became tachycardic. I was, yeah, I mean, I was, I was, they had I don't remember that most of it, thankfully, but my mother says there were probably at least six people around my bed the entire time watching me on the monitor uh, with the doctor at the foot of my bed. So we were there all day um, until I was finally stable enough to go home. That was the last stellate ganglion nerve block that we did. Now, what would the biopsychosocial types think about this? This little story right here. Um. <laughs> I 
<laughs> He's thinking. <laughs> See, that's the BS. It's all in your head, people, mm -hmm. which is most of TMJ world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it worked because you thought it was going to work. Mm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it, didn't work, it didn't work when you were anxious about it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I would believe that. <laughs> I mean, it. John nailed it. He thought about it very carefully, methodically. I, yeah. Very type B, you know, and it's like. Because <laughs> they would ask you questions like that that made you think right. you were crazy. I mean, I was on my living room floor one night and I actually was trying to pull out my own teeth just to make the pain stop. But you're crazy. The first time that the dentist did the. Um, that numbed you. Uh huh. When you start experiencing the symptoms, did, did you proceed with this filling or did you go home or what happened? Oh, he still did the filling afterwards. Uh, and then he wanted to do another one. So they said it happened in utero. I used to have these bubbles in my teeth, so they weren't cavities. They were just bubbles that the dentist would go in and kind of break, fill in, so that if I ever had a cavity, it would have just gone so much deeper faster. That's what he was fixing, was a bubble. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Welcome to Northwest Arkansas. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is where they invented the toothbrush. Yeah. 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 Okay. But that's, they found those when I was a teenager, uh -huh. that I just had these little air pockets in my teeth. And so they would go in and just, and then fill it in like a cavity. What is that doctor? What is that doctor? I think it sounds like Parkinson. But anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> but he, yeah. But he still did that filling in, and then he wanted me to come in because I had another one scheduled. Canceled that appointment. And he felt bad, and because he also knew I've had, I'm kind of that person, like I've always had medical issues. And he was like, Oh, if I could have picked somebody for this to not happen to, it would have been you. Um, but it was. And it. So, what, what was the surgery like with uh, Shaw? Easy. <laughs> not a big deal. Not a big deal. Um, a lot of prep work going in for the MRIs and the scans and the CTs just to make sure that everything was completely laid out. Um, but the surgery was about six and a half hours uh, to both do sides. both sides. Uh, it was one night in the hospital. It was getting up every hour to walk the halls of the hospital. <laughs> it was probably my least favorite part. Um, Did you feel better right away, like as soon as you came out of the anesthesia? I didn't have any, I didn't experience pain. At all? Mm -mm. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. They probably hit you with ketamine. Right they did. Um, that was so, that's another piece that I was doing. Yeah. Um, I found, we actually had an IV clinic at the time down in Johnson. They've since moved up a little closer here that um, I was getting ketamine infusions. When I started, I did six ketamine infusions in a week and a half um, just to, I was having a really bad flare. Um, it was in December, um, was when I worked for the family. Um, so my stress level was at an all time high. And um, so we were doing those. I started to have relief. So then we were going in about every two weeks. Um, that then started to increase over time where I got to the point where I was only having to have ketamine every three months. Um, they sent me home with some troches that I could take small doses at home if I needed. Um, but that was giving me a little bit more relief. And then they put ketamine in my bag at the hospital. How, how long were you in Florida? Um, we arrived in Florida on January 6th. Uh, my pre-work started on the 7th, and then we were there for a week and a half after surgery. And then now you just go back for your six days? Um, every three months. You, you go back, it's a one day appointment with him. So I'm down there 24, 36 hours, down and back. And then your bite has changed a little bit. A little bit. But did he did he use the splint to lock you in at surgery? Probably. Like like Piper did. So what was different is I had they had told me after surgery I would wake up, I would be in a splint, and then I would be bandaged shut. Um, and I was for the first three days. And then when I went in for my first checkup, we actually found that my bite was best without the splint. That's pretty cool. And so I didn't have to have the splint. Um, I just banded my mouth teeth on teeth, which was 
nice just from the claustrophobia idea of having that splint in your mouth 24 hours a day. Say it again. What do you, what do you attach the band to? Um, I have surgical buttons. Uh, okay. I had uh, eight on my front teeth. Those got removed after my three-month appointment. Um, these will probably get removed on my nine-month, kind of hoping at six, <laughs> um, just because I'm doing so well. So starting this last Wednesday, I only have to sleep in my bands. Um, it had started every all day except five times a day for 30 minutes. And that's when you're supposed to eat, brush, uh, do your exercises. So now I do my exercises one time a day and I only band at bed. So if you had one thing to tell a pack of dentists, what would you tell them? Nick and I have been so passionate about, I just wish people knew that there were other things to look for. That it's not just about the tooth itself. It's not just about the gum itself. Like there is so much more underneath there that can lead to so many other problems. And especially with Crips, the earlier the diagnosis, the better your chance is at some kind of remission. Um, because it took me over a year and a half to get diagnosed. Remission I thought was out of the cards because they say you usually have to catch it in six or less months. Um, but here we are. <laughs> you have a ramp. So complex regional pain syndrome, there's type 1, type 2, and uh, nonspecific. Mm -hmm. Type 1 means the nerves have not been severed. Type 2 means you've got some type of trauma, the nerves have been severed, and that's likely contributing. Nonspecific, they don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. So Jasmine was type 1. Okay, so the problem with like something like, remember I, I mentioned in the early lecture yesterday about sympathetics and regulatory and immune system and vitals and all that. Notice when she said they hit the stellate ganglion, the, all the bad stuff went, that's vital stuff. That's like heart rate, <laughs> respiration, okay. All that crap got discombobulated because they, they probably went a little bit too far north or south or something, okay. Anyhow, so that's scary, right? Well, here's the, here's the scariest part. I remember she came in one time, she's like, I've got to get carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, surgery. Surgery now. I'm like, really? <laughs> You've tried so hard to convince me not to. Yeah, because the more times you cut, the more likely you ramp it up and have another problem or a new problem. And here's the, here's the thing. Your, like before you had the jaw surgery. Yeah. Yeah, I was the losing the function of my hand. I couldn't hold a fork. I couldn't hold a bag. Um, they you were, did do the surgery. I had three surgeries in one year. Uh, in January, they did my right. In July, they had to do the trigger finger. And then in December, we had to do my left. But see, the thing I worried the most about for her, because right around this time, here's COVID coming along, right? Mm -hmm. I worried the most about because the sympathetics are regulating the immune system. So you have someone that has Crips and it's getting worse and worse and it's untreated. Your immune system starts tanking the next to nothing. Yep. <laughs> so I stayed pretty hibernated um, just because I also have three other autoimmune conditions. You never vaccinated, right? Mm -mm. <laughs> Um, but just because I'm, I'm so immunocompromised, I had to be really careful. Um, and they've been great with... How do you feel now in general? Great. You're not sick or none of that? I work at an elementary school, so I do get sick a lot. Uh, <laughs> I'm building up that immune system because I fill in for the nurse when she's gone. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> Lord help me. Um, but yeah, it's nothing that has stopped me yeah. you know it's when before I was missing work for flares what do you do? um before I worked for the school I worked for the Walton family and so I was in charge of their personal development and family events um so it was a very high stress 24 hour a day demand kind of job um that's when I started the ketamine because I have reached my limit and it's great. <laughs> I have school hours. I'm done by 3.30. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, so I do enrollment. You see, they, um, they, teach, uh, they teach dentists uh, never, ever do TMJ surgery. Ever, never, under no circumstances. John just had a slide up, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, there were... You know, it was liquid diet for three months after surgery. I'm now my restriction is as long as I can pinch it between my fingers, I'm allowed to eat it. 
um, then that will just continue to increase. But what a price to pay for your life back. Um, and my scars, so I'm showing Nick, they have now gone inside my ear. You can't even see them. Um, the fat graft was done from my abdomen. That healed really well and quickly. So, Is Jeff still there? Yeah. That's awesome. Jeff's that. still there. Uh, most of the office, it's still the same folks. Yeah. So they've, they've taken great care of me. Um, now, here's the negative. What would approximate cost? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, approximate cost um, is without insurance. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's say without. Let's say without insurance. Probably three hundred thousand dollars for just the surgery, or you're saying your whole uh, pipe, uh, the clinic, the hospital, pre and post about three hundred thousand. And that's separate from all the other things that you correct. Have. Yep. So you've had some insurance coverage? Yes, a lot of insurance coverage, actually. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> uh, Piper or, or Shaw's cost is about sixty-five seventy. Um, um, for not for this, uh, that's just his fee at the clinic. Then there were the surgical fees that took place through the hospital itself. Um, but he also you pay for the entire year up front. So every time that I go in for a checkup, um, they just file a new claim at that point. So I don't have to continue to be out of money throughout the year. My parents would say, best money they've ever spent. <laughs> Can I ask one last thing? Yeah. Um, history of surgeries. Before, see, here's the thing. Yeah. Right? Because, like, so she goes into the dentist, she gets injected, she has electric shock throughout the body. So a patient perceives, what did you just do to me? And why is it going everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. But she knows now that was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, all the things. That was probably not, that was guaranteed, not the reason mm -hmm. she got Crips. And that's what we learned in the videos when I first saw Dr. Piper were just all of the things they make you consider that have happened to any time you're intubated and they've overextended your jaw. Um, every kid, as we flew over the handlebars on our bicycle, um, I face planted a teeter-totter in kindergarten and my top teeth went through my upper lip like all of those things um i had had a complete thyroidectomy i had had turbinate removal endometriosis surgery two shoulder surgeries um so i had definitely had my fair share of intubations that all contribute to it just so being one too many every time you cut or surgerize you are mm -hmm. stimulating the hot knocks. You're stimulating. In our world, we're, we're, we prep that tooth that dies, we just pissed off the sympathetics. The pulp only has sympathetic, we don't have terror, right? Now, the rest of the body, the rest of the face, you got parasympathetic to counter, but if there's enough, and all of us are gonna be built a little bit differently. Maybe I can take 100 surgeries, but she can only take 20, mm -hmm. or vice versa. And maybe I'm the guy that winds up with the Crips, and yeah. she's not. You know what I'm saying? So, because that became one of the issues. You know, I had family and friends that were saying, "Are you going to pursue legal action against the dentist?" But, you know, that comes to mind. yeah, I mean, well, because you start being out sure. so much money that you kind of go, "How am I going to get compensated?" I have heard of one case that was actually successful, but because it's so varied based on what your body yeah. is willing to tolerate, that it can be fine for one person and just not fine for you. Yeah, but and, and last thing I think we need to state, um, remember, everywhere she went, they told her she's nuts. Yep. They had no idea what the hell was wrong with her. The physicians themselves are supposed to know about this stuff. They will always argue it never happens in the head and neck. Remember the homework video I gave you about Piper and the ACP? Yeah. Watch it again, one last time. Because he's going to go through the anatomy, and he's going to go through, then he goes through, uh, what, what's the girl's name? It was on Dr. Oz. Um, Gloria Stefan. No, no, no. Uh, sorry, I think that's her name. Wasn't that? No, Paul Abdul. Paul Abdul. Paul Abdul. Oh, yes. That Paul Abdul video. Did you ever send you that video? You did? Yeah. Um, you know, she got, how'd she get hers, right? It was a plane wreck Bleeding. and a car wreck and, and she was pushing through it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, have one of those dramatic times on, on Oz talking about grips 
and nobody knew what the hell it was. Actually, they were calling it RSD. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely different name. So people don't associate RSD with Crips. But Piper goes, that whole video is really excellent because... Yeah, it is. Yeah, you, you, you said that. And, and so I followed Piper that year. I was at, right after him, immediately I was lecturing up there in Kansas City. And I threw ja a, ja a couple of Jaslyn's videos on the, mm -hmm. on the stage. 400 docs at the ACP scientific meeting that year got to see that. But so many of them were biopsychosocial. They didn't care. But a few of them probably sparked it up. And that's why, thank you for coming. Yeah. Because I wanted, you know, anytime I have a CNO function, I really think this is like that important. And she's like the perfect, and, and it turned out to be the perfect mm -hmm. example because she like fully responded. Mm -hmm. Which I, in all the years I've dealt with Piper and the surgeries, I've never seen a full response that I know of. Because a lot of these people don't live here. But she happens to live here. And it's like, it's so awesome to be like part of figuring out what's wrong with it. Because it's destroying the life, right? Yeah. And those people around her. If you go into any chat room for Crips people, I... I feel like I now have a duty to be able to go, you're not crazy. It can be in the head and neck. It can happen. It can spread. It can move. Um, because you just, you watch these people. Um, what frightened me when I first got diagnosed was never Google things, right? Um, you know, Crips, its street name is known as the suicide disease. Um, because the pain is so bad and because people think you're crazy. Um, and so you watch on these boards, memoriams of people that have taken their own life because it's just too much. So that's why I, anytime Nick says, come tell your story, come help people know about this, it is my obligation to do that. Um, these guys will have thousands of patients mm -hmm. next 20 years of practice. It doesn't look the same. Um, to every person, but it is 100% real. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. You know what, if you want, yeah. maybe I'll splice a part of this out if you're up for that, throw it up on the channel. You know, whatever you ask, I'll say yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> it is personal. Yeah. It's up to you. It's 100% okay with me. Because, you know, I think I'll cut this out of the CNO1 video that we're doing, and I'll, I'll make a special, it may take a while because i got a lot to do, but. If you need more, you just call me, I'm down the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. My pleasure. Thank you guys for caring. Dr. Nick, God forbid you ever need dental treatment in the future. What would you do differently for her? Me? Would you give her Oh, for her? Yeah. I'd avoid Effie for for grins. Yeah, we've learned that. I'm working a lower. I'd probably give her a GAN to ramp down sympathetics, just to be safe. If I'm working the upper, I'm I'm just going to avoid Effie. And I might even pull one of the walls things and pull, pull out propane. Okay. Um, now, what about why do you think um, orthodontics are in your future? I think my bite's a little bit off. So how would you address that? That I've seen yet. I, I'm not allowed to have any kind of dental review for, I think, nine months after surgery, um, just yeah, for they, the they extension. Don't want, they don't want her cranking. Yeah, so. cleaning or none of that problem. Mm -mm. If she, got, she could probably get a cleaning, but they, you know, after like 20 millimeters max kind of thing. Yeah. Which is like, you know, to get all done. I, for the first three months, I had to brush my teeth five times a day. They're pretty clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, so you've been around a while. You ever seen this? Kind of? Well, you know, I got touchy about that one case because it was, you know, scratching my head too much. I was losing yeah. hair. It's one of those things where you know you start saying oh, what's going on here, you know. Yeah. You know, before you know it, you know, one moment you start extracting that tooth, extract another tooth, yeah. extract another tooth, whatever. Start seeing this thing, you know. And uh, I told you you were the first one that said that to me. And I said, mm -hmm. Where can I go? Where can I send this person? Because I wasn't really into what we were talking about now. And uh, I haven't heard from this. We reached out there three or four times, I don't know what happened. But it was the same thing, that regional pain. You know, this was radiating in there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to do all these different treatments. And Piper said that I was really fortunate because most people that got to him had had at least two or three root canals at minimum. Yeah. And I only agreed to one. Um, and then there was that Bernard Hushman, remember? Yes. That website, there was a, a neurologist. He just passed away recently. But he and Piper used to work together. And he was a Crips expert. Mm -hmm. And he was somewhere like on 
the Gulf side of Florida, maybe five hours away from St. Pete where Piper was. And I guess it was around 2000, Piper calls him up one day and says, I've got a patient I'd like you to see. I'm just a little old, old surgeon in St. Pete. I think they got Crips. And Usman's a polite guy. And he's like, well, I'm glad it's your patient, but nah, they don't get Crips in the head and neck. And he's like the world's expert, written textbooks, all this stuff. Right? So Piper sends the patient over. Next day, he gets a phone call. This patient has Crips. But hotshot, you will never see that again, because that never happens in that neck. Piper, I'd like to see some more. <laughs> So they kept going, right? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, Piper, because he's trained as a physician and a surgeon, you know, he's you know, he's an oral surgeon too, in general and oral, right? Mm -hmm. and he's a brilliant guy, and he's he's a great thinker. That mustache, you know, just amplifies his really <laughs> thinking skills. Yeah, so uh -huh. yeah, so I mean, I, I, I spent a lot of time with the guy. Anyhow, he's like one of those guys that wheels are turning, crank, 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 crank. you know, kind of type B, calm, very. Anyhow, so he and her, Hushman started uh, collaborating, and they started lecturing. And they used to have lectures. I was never there. This is before I met him. But apparently, there were lectures for several years where they'd have Crips meetings in like like a convention center, and there'd be physicians in this room, and there'd be patients in this room, and then they'd lecture, lecture, intermingle, pitch, 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 you know, break apart. My point is, they're bitching because, hey, why don't you? Why can't you help me? <laughs> you know, they're they're trying to make the the doctors understand that this is real, <laughs> and yeah. you know, you, you, but and also the head and neck thing is real. So then, so when I was doing my like the update in the second edition, I had that medical crossover section in the second. The third textbook's gonna have the same section, but I've added some other stuff for like lasers. It's basically the same thing, other than the laser thing. Uh, but when I was researching that, you know, you start looking through, there's a guy named Waldman. He's a JDMD. And guess where he's located? Kansas City, which is where we were lecturing that. I guess that was 2018, when Piper and I did that big cranial facial pain meeting. In 18 or 19, whatever year. I think it was 18. But I, 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 have, I called Piper one time before we did that lecture. I was like, wouldn't it be cool to get Waldman in there? What's my point? Waldman wrote two textbooks. He's a pain management specialist, like a guru. And he's an attorney, too, on top of this, right? And he's, and he's written a bunch of textbooks on uh, pain. He has two textbooks in particular. One's called Common Pain Syndromes. One's called Uncommon Pain Syndromes. Common, uncommon. Guess where Crips is? Common. So I rest my case. <laughs> His name is Waldman, Dr. Waldman. So, you probably never see this again in your I mean, the C you'll ever do. This is real. I see it probably once a year, maybe, in a normal pool. Now, you pull out the people that come to me from the map. Now, I see that. I see hints of it, half the patients. I see definitive like her probably every eighth or ninth. Okay? And then where you can send someone like that, you're going to have to find a neurologist that understands that this can happen in the head and neck. And you're going to have to send, if it's up in this region, someone like Shaw, who's Piper's successor, or Zivovitz gets it too in Maryland. So Maryland, you got Zivovitz at Zivovitz. In uh, St. Pete, Florida, you've got Brian Shaw from <laughs> Piper Clinic. And that's it. Pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> I appreciate you. I'm so happy for you. Thanks, me too. <laughs> Life is good. Life is good. <laughs>